Hi, I'm Dr. Doug Marcant from the Department of Psychological Science. And I'm Alexi Galati, also from the Department of Psychological Science. Over the past decade, there's been growing recognition among researchers in psychology and other fields that common research practices are undermining the robustness of the scientific knowledge we produce. This credibility crisis was spurred in part by failures to replicate classic or high-profile findings from previous work. This has led to a greater understanding of how scientific evidence is distorted by a number of common questionable research practices, including decisions that are made during the design, analysis, reporting, and publication of research. In response, researchers are increasingly adopting open science practices that promote robustness and transparency. However, while these new practices are becoming more widespread among researchers, they're often not a standard part of the research methods curriculum for undergraduates, including for psychology students here at UNC Charlotte. In addition, as of yet, there's little pedagogical research focused on how to effectively teach these concepts and assess learning in this domain. So our project had two goals. First, we sought to align our practices for teaching research methods with these emerging open science practices. To do this, we created new materials for Psych 2103, a required lab course for psychology majors. These included three video lectures introducing students to the replication crisis, questionable research practices like p-hacking, and open science methods including pre-registration of hypotheses, planning sample sizes, conducting reproducible analyses, and openly sharing data sets, analysis code, and study materials. Second, we wanted to evaluate whether these new materials led to a better understanding of how research practices impact the robustness and credibility of scientific results in psychology. We discovered that while there's existing research focused on how to assess understanding of common concepts from statistics and research methods, there hasn't yet been research on how to assess understanding of how those research practices connect to broader issues of replicability and open science. To address this gap, we developed the Open Science Concept Inventory, or OSCE, to evaluate students' understanding of concepts related to open science, which are covered in our new materials. Studies one and two focused on the development of the open science concept inventory. In study one, we developed scenarios related to key open science concepts. The example here concerns publication bias, the tendency to publish research reporting statistically significant results. We elicited open-ended responses about how researchers should act in a given scenario, and based on those responses, we created a set of multiple choice options, which included a best practice as the correct response, and common misconceptions reported by participants in study one serving as distractors. In study two, we validated the multiple choice questionnaire in a large sample of undergraduates and used item response theory analysis to identify a final set of questions. Finally, in study three, we implemented the new materials in four sections of a psychology research methods course during fall 2019 and spring 2020, and used the OSCE to assess understanding of open science concepts both near the beginning and at the end of the semester. We found that those students who completed the questionnaires quickly had poor performance both at pre and post test. But among those students who spent longer completing the OSCE, we found significant gains in performance from pre-test to post-test. This provides some initial evidence that students were able to use what they had learned from the new curriculum to reason about situations involving questionable research practices and open science practices. The credibility crisis has led to major advances in how we think about research practices and their effects on the scientific evidence we produce. Although our understanding of these issues continues to evolve, it's clear that we need to incorporate these lessons into the way we teach students to conduct and consume research. We hope that others can build on our work, either by using the OSCE as an assessment tool or by adapting our lectures and activities into their courses. We've made all of our materials freely available at the link shown on the slide. Thank you.